Hello, Jess here with an interactive card featuring the brand new Magic Iris die set from Lawn Fawn. To start off, here's a closer look at that Magic Iris in action. Now let's go backwards and show you how to put it all together. First you've got to do a little die cutting using the Magic Iris set. You'll start with four of the large rings, you don't need to save the inner circles, cut from dark gray cardstock, three of the smaller curved end tab pieces, and the larger rounded tab piece also cut from gray cardstock. The decorative arrow cut from white cardstock, a round inner circle cut from white cardstock, and three of the sausage shaped pieces also cut from white cardstock. Next take one of the gray rings and place the solid round die with the three short tabs and three long arms in the center of the ring and tape it in place with purple tape. It doesn't matter where the arms are positioned as long as the center is centered within the ring. Die cut that ring and you'll see that there are now three notches in the gray ring and three stitched markings along the inner edge. First take the sausage shaped piece and fit the tiny tab at the end into the notch on the gray ring. You want the inner curve of the sausage shaped piece to fit snugly alongside the inner curve of the gray ring. So it might take a little wiggling of the sausage shaped piece to get it to fit just right. It seems that if you point the tab towards the bottom of the notch, it fits best. Fit all three white pieces into the notches. Next, you'll notice that the sausage shaped pieces have tiny X's on the end opposite the tabs. Place a mini glue dot on each X. Keeping the sausage shaped pieces aligned with the inner curve of the gray ring, place another gray ring directly on top. It will be held in place by the three mini glue dots. Next, turn your magic iris over. You'll see three stitch markings along the inner edge of the gray ring. Apply adhesive from that marking to the outer edge in a straight line. Then take the three tabs and adhere them to the back of the gray ring. The curved end of the tab fits perfectly along the inner edge of the gray ring. Once you've adhered all three, Turn the magic iris over again. Now it's time to adhere the handle. First, arrange the magic iris so that one of the long gray tabs is pointing down or towards you. It doesn't matter which gray tab since they're all the same. Next, adhere the decorative white arrow piece to the end of the larger curved tab. You'll see that the end of the larger tab also has a curved edge that fits along the inner curve of the gray ring. Fit it against the inner curve and then slide it towards the gray tab that's pointed towards you until you create a small V between the gray tab and the larger tab. Next, apply adhesive to about half of the large gray tab and adhere it to the magic iris creating that small V. Next, place another gray ring directly on top of the magic iris 
but do not adhere it to the ring. Then apply adhesive to the three gray tabs and loosely fold them over and secure them to the ring. If you pull them too tightly, then the magic iris won't move smoothly. The end of the tab should just about reach the stitched line of the inner ring, but shouldn't go any further. If it does, you've pulled it too tight. Fold all three tabs over and secure, and your magic iris is complete. When you slide the handle back and forth, the iris should open and close. Now it's time to decorate. First you'll apply adhesive to the top of the magic iris and adhere the final gray ring. This just covers up the mechanism and gives it a nice finished look. I trimmed a piece of pattern paper from the Hello Sunshine Remix paper collection to four by five and a quarter and adhered it to a white card base. Then I adhered the magic iris to the top half of the card, making sure that the handle, when the iris is closed, isn't hanging off the card base for easy shipping. To adhere the magic iris, apply adhesive only to the gray tabs. You can also now fold the white tabs over so that they won't show from behind the iris when it's open. And now it's time to complete the rest of the card. First, I take the stitched white circle and stamp a small scene from the Your Sublime set with Copic-friendly black ink. Then I color the image with Copic markers. I'll speed this part up, but please feel free to leave a question in the comments if you need to know any of the marker colors.
Once I finished coloring, I applied adhesive to the back of the circle and adhered it inside the opened magic iris. I wanted to make the gray ring resemble a porthole so I hole punched gray cardstock and adhered the tiny circles around the center of the ring with mini glue dots. Then I added a few accents with a white gel pen. Off camera, I stamped a sentiment from Your Sublime and trimmed it down to a thin fishtail banner and adhered it to the bottom of my card. I finished my card by adding crystal glaze to the circles on the porthole window. And that's it! I hope you enjoyed my video today. You can find links to my blog and all of the products I use in the YouTube description below. And if you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows you'd like to see more from me. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching, have a beautiful day, and happy crafting. Bye!